A watch dial's function is a kind of performance art. Its principal purpose is to display something you cannot see. It's a form of visual art such as painting, sculpture and filmmaking. Think of a watch dial as a kind of canvas for the interpretation of time. The hands, the indices, minute track act as the alphabet in a language of time measurement. The movement brings life to the dial, but without language they are nothing but mute mechanicals. The dial translates clockwork into hours, minutes and seconds. The ancient Egyptians gave us the 24-hour day and the subdivisions into hours and minutes comes from the Babylonians. Early decorative dial design took inspiration from classical art, like this 1645 pocket watch. The dial itself is emblazoned with the coat of arms of a European aristocrat. The ancient technique of cloisonne, which means to partition. The partitions are gold strands laid upon the outline of the design. Enamel is then introduced into the spaces between, with the gold strand still visible at the end of the process. Industrial factory production introduced screen printing and pad printing of dials. For clarity, subdials were highlighted, from early wristlets to chronographs, panda and reverse. In the 1940s and 50s, subdials could also time a long distance call. Hoyer also tooled up the subdial with this mid 50s Solonar and Seafarer Tide Watch. A Mickey Mouse watch from the 1930s and Dan Dare from the 1950s. This is a 1957 Soviet watch celebrating the achievements of Sputnik. Generally though, watch dials of the 1950s were unadorned. 50s watchmaking was technically excellent thanks to improvements in tooling and the focus by all the major Swiss houses on accuracy and chronometer ratings. With the emphasis on movements, dial design was largely conservative and sober but they weren't austere or unattractive. Dials looked like this or this. Then, seemingly out of the void, in 1959, this watch arrived. The watchmaker was Mido. You are looking at the Mido Diver Reference 5709. The dial is iconoclastic. For those that saw this watch in 1959, the newness must have been a shock. Consider the Rolex Submariner had only been launched a mere six years earlier. Nicknamed the Rainbow Diver, this watch was part of the Mido Ocean Star Collection. With its monocoque case, permafit glass and aqua dura sealing, the watch was not only watertight, but it was also airtight. The no-date version first came out in 1959, and the date version was introduced around 1962. All up, four models were released. The 5907 was discontinued in 1965. Here, was a new language of dial design. But what exactly was this new language saying? Much like modern art, you look at this dial and you ask, how do I interpret this? Before we examine the dial closer, let's place the watch in its historical context. We are right at the end of the 1950s. And although the 50s was politically conservative, there was a lot going on. Popular music was changing from old-time crooners to rhythm and blues and rock and roll, and it was the birth of the teenager. The word pop was first coined in 1954 to describe a new type of art that was inspired by the imagery of the popular culture and the rise of consumerism, branding 
and advertising. Pop colours were vivid, not meant to reflect the artist's inner sensation of the world. Instead, these colours refer to the popular culture. During the short period the watch dial was in production, this Andy Warhol screen print also appeared. And Jasper John was also displaying his concentric circle target art in American galleries. This was the prevailing artistic zeitgeist. Now, I'm not sure I'm saying this dial is art, but it was art designed, designed to clearly communicate, which is something all art wants to do, to express beyond what mere words can convey. Take this clip of Cameron at the Art Gallery from the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Clearly, Cameron is feeling something, even as he lacks the vocabulary to express it. OK, so let's take a closer look at the dial language of this watch. Remember, this is a diver that can reach 300 metres, a serious tool. Those concentric circles display decompression times for divers based on the US Navy decompression charts. The chart lets the diver know how long he needs to decompress for. Essentially, Mido took those charts and spun it into a watch dial. They produced two versions, one in metres, one in feet, depending on the model. And here you can see the dive depth. So let's say you swam to a depth of 30 metres, so you're on the green band, and you stayed underwater for 25 minutes. That means you need to decompress for five minutes. Decompression stops were typically done at five metres, no matter the depth of the dive. So, to decompress, one simply floats at that depth for the prescribed time. The bright colours on a watch dial fade at depth. But look what happens once we take the colours out. Those numbers remain legible. At 12, we have the depth rating linked with a coloured band representing a line of time. Following the colour around the dial will reveal the decompression time. Like all good tool watches, this dial shows time within time. The colours are daring and the dial inventive, displaying a technical and aesthetic mastery. The aesthetic value of dial art is measured in its ability to help us reveal time beautifully, just as art can reveal an emotion. Visual art and design sit along a timeline that continues to expand our shared visual language. It's hard to grasp the new, the shocking, or the illuminating. We need time. And once the shock is gone, we can absorb the visual data into our vocabulary. Design is always being born, and designers make choices about what to leave in and leave out. That evolution is always running, running forward, like this man. OK, here is a parable. Buster Keaton loosening rocks as he runs. One rock hits another, causing it too to roll. This cause and effect plays out in art and design. One innovation begets another and another and another, like rock hitting rock. When Mido broke with the past, it gave a kind of permission for others to reinvent the tool watch dial. It freed up creativity to terraform a new dial design landscape. One year later, the Vulcan Nautical was presented. Through the 60s and beyond, that momentum continued.
The Rainbow Diver was a product of its time, but it was always calling forward, entreating new designers to remember that a watch dial is a type of performance art. Looking back, we can now see a back catalogue of divers and chronographs that heard that call. A call that still urges an exploration of the full possibilities of tool watch dial design. It would be wrong to overstate the legacy of the Rainbow Diver. After all, Mido didn't invent a completely new wheel. But they did adorn it in colour.